Derek, are you prepared? No. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you on your phone. So Sorry. I like, <laughs> no, I know. I, talking I did about that on purpose. Dogs Wait, and let meatballs. Me, let me adjust this. Okay. I was eating meatballs a second ago. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you know. Dogs okay. and meatballs. Dogs and meatballs. Man, nothing better than a good dog and a good meatball. Good evening, ladies and ladies and gentle worms. Hello. This is Quentin Bell. This is Derek Mola. We are humans and pasta. Welcome back to the Human Pasta Podcast. Mm-hmm. It's good to be back. It's it's been a minute. Uh, not uh, well, not really. Yeah, not really. We just didn't record the normal day that we normally record because I had things to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. T- we usually record everything on a Thursday. Where we are currently recording this on a Saturday, Saturday night. But it's I I wouldn't want to spend my Saturday night doing anything else. Woo! <laughs> we, this this is the cool time, people. This is the cool time, man. You know, some folks. They go out and they and they have a few drinks or they, they go to party. the club or they, they have a party. This this is real party. <laughs> we're on the grind. <laughs> <laughs> this is yeah, we're we're saying things uh, here. We're making noise. This is our fun. Putting time. our putting our vibrations <laughs> out into the cosmoverse. <laughs> I like that cosmoverse. Into the That's a good one. Unibrow. 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 <laughs> out into the great unibrow. Mm-hmm. That's what we, yeah we, they, yeah that's what the Milky Way is right is is it's just one it's one a big unibrow, unibrow. big <laughs> mongoloid follicle. unibrow <laughs> we're just one follicle in this huge unibrow the universe is a big monogloid <laughs> big unibrow <laughs> uh, wait, wait what did you monocloid I said the universe is one big mongoloid <laughs> oh you can't you can't use that why term. can't I say mongoloid because <laughs> the Mongols. <laughs> Derek, I'm telling you, <laughs> mongoloid is really an offensive term. I don't term. think it is, though. I don't think that... I've never... I have never, ever but, heard of anybody getting offended but, by that but term. But it actually... It's, it's because it's super old. Like, it's like a 60s insult. <laughs> like, my... Dude, I'm telling you... So when my mom was going to school, when she was like... like what? She was born in like... She was going to school around like the 60s and 70s. And that's what people, that's what people would, like, that was an insult. Like, that's what you would call people with, like, Down syndrome. It's like, you're a mongoloid. <laughs> Picture it in that context. It's incredibly mean. <laughs> Picture it in that context. It's awful. Oh, my God. It's not that bad. <laughs> I mean, okay. It's a really funny word. <laughs> it is a really it's, funny it's, word. It's really fun to say. But also. <laughs> I don't think anybody's getting steamed up about mongoloid. I, and if you are, eat a Twix. <laughs> Okay, get, get over it. Chill out. Hey, hey, if you're upset about mongoloid, you're probably a mongoloid. <laughs> you probably are a mongoloid. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't think you're wrong necessarily either, because I too have not heard a single person use the term mongoloid unless it was in jest. I've never heard anyone use it as an insult. I just, that's just what I've heard. <laughs> is, it, is, it, is it used to be really mean? <laughs> so I'm like, wait, 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 be careful. <laughs> oh my God. Anyway, yeah, I saw anybody. a bunch of movies last weekend. You saw a bunch of movies last weekend? Last weekend I Whoa. saw... Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! Oh my god! <laughs> movies! <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here, Zoidberg. Get out of here. Um, yeah, I saw a bunch of... I saw a bunch of movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, Tell me about these movies. Uh, the first one I watched was... I finally watched Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> That's one I saw surprisingly. It's on, it's on Netflix. Um, oh, okay. Surprisingly, I, I I honestly didn't expect it to hold up. I thought it was. Oh, yeah. I thought it was just going to be Did whatever. Did you see it forever ago as a boy? No, I no. I'm just saying, like as a film from oh. the from the seven. I mean, not saying that films from the seventies don't hold up, but I know what you mean. Though. But I watched like okay, so a while ago I watched like. Um, Nightmare on Elm Street and Friday the 13th. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I wasn't really scared by those. I thought those were kind of goofy. And, you know, Texas Chainsaw Massacre is, like, up there in that category of, like, being one of those those great infamous horror movies. So, like, watching it, I was like, I wonder if this is going to be the same experience that I had with, like, Friday the 13th and with Fri- and uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, where it's like, it's not really going to hold up. It's going to be kind of goofy. I was, I was, yeah, it was pretty mm-hmm. creepy. I was pretty freaked out by it. Texas Chainsaw Massacre really held up and it was, it felt, it was honestly to say it was very refreshing for mm. a movie from the seventies. Oh. It was very refreshing because you know, everybody's going to die in the movie. The people, yeah. people, the, <laughs> people the, the kids in the movie, they die very 
quickly and they don't like it all the fat is trimmed off this movie there's no mm. there's no friday the 13th shit where it's like they're trying to like expand everything out and like keep you on edge and make it tense and like you know the, the long game it's like right. they introduce everybody and you know they get to this house and then it's like everybody's like killed off like one by one like immediately like there's no long wait it's like Happens in like rapid success, <laughs> but it, it's so refreshing. I and, like my murder quick, and it's like you know, and it's like, and the kills are like out of nowhere. Like I was not, oh, like I was not expecting them to happen the way that they did, how quick it happened, mm. where they happened. Like I was expecting like this really long build up. It's like okay, here's where this person's gonna get killed. They're gonna go fuck in the woods, and then someone's <laughs> gonna die, or someone's gonna go out and take a piss, or whatever. Like yeah. none of those cliches are are really in there, and yeah, the the murders just feel like. They happen randomly, like like it would happen in real life. It just kind of like out yeah, of no, out along. of nowhere, you, they just get killed, and then um, yeah, and just like that family is super interesting. It's super like they don't give you a whole lot of information. It's just no. very like mysterious and vague, and that's a good thing, I think. It's it's super. It was it just was very refreshing mm-hmm. for a film that was from the seventies, like and in terms of today's like horror films, like. It was incredibly refreshing. I, I want to say something about that really quick, because mm-hmm. I know I have a million movies to talk about. Not I? a a couple. Oh, I, well, no. my my mom fucking loves that movie, and so does my brother. Mm-hmm. I think both of my brothers really, really like that movie, as well as um, <clears throat> A Thousand and One Maniacs. I've never heard of it. Yeah, it's a weird one. It's like this confederate town in the south that eats people okay <laughs> and so yeah like they it's it's really fucked up and there's they're like they get like i haven't seen it my mom really likes it it's one of her favorite movies it, it's very it's a very quotable movie it's it's like a it's a horror movie but it's supposed to be kind of like i think it's reveling in the carnage like it's supposed to be kind of funny it's like oh well, i mean um Texas, Texas chainsaw is kind no. of oh really yeah it's kind of funny oh okay um it's it's i mean they're there's a lot of like black comedy, like dark, okay. like dark comedy bits that are you're watching it and you're there's one scene in particular that you watch it. I won't say what it is because I don't want to spoil anything. It's not really a spoiler, but it's it's better in the beginning. No, it's towards okay. it's, it's it's like towards the end. Okay, but um, you're watching it and it's it's freaky, but at the same time you're like, it's kind of goofy. It's kind of <laughs> funny, like. And there's a couple scenes that are like that where it's like, I love oh, this is kind of goofy. Like, this is kind of fun. And <laughs> I, I and like, because I was talking to Colin about it. Colin's our, our friend. Uh, Dude, our other funny I friend. miss that. I miss that funny fella. We should get him on the show. <laughs> that, that, Frankie, show. that Frankie. Frankie I was fella. thinking about him the other day. You know what's funny, too, is I just found out uh, his film that we saw on yeah. the air. It's going to be at the same festival. Is that, is that the festival? Dude, is that the, fe- well, the festival today? Because it's a two-day oh, event. Okay. It's today and tomorrow. Uh, his was a his was today, okay. and then mine's tomorrow. Okay, um, I'm gonna be in a film festival also. Oh yeah, talk about that uh, for tomorrow. Sure. Uh, on today's the 16th. Tomorrow will be the 17th. It's the For All One Film Festival in Rhode Island. Uh, oh. My film Food Runners will be on there. You can watch Food Runners at Mola Productions, or just type in Food Runners. It's my short film. It's awesome. Texas Chainsaw. If you haven't watched it, watch it. It's good. Right. I'm making a recommendation to a movie that's. Super old. Like 40 years old. Dude, dude I, I, I... Yeah. So, I watched I that, days. and then I watched, um, in preparation for seeing The Lighthouse, I watched The Witch. Oh, yeah, yeah, same you direct, told me about same that. Direct, the same director, Robert Eggers. I was terrified to watch The mm. Witch, because I, I... I I don't think I've ever explained this, actually, because we talked about horror movies. I, I really love horror movies. I do. Uh-huh. I really enjoy the genre. I, I love scary stuff. I think it's super... I think it's really fascinating and interesting. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, Same here. <laughs> and, you know, the stories and stuff are great. That being said, I don't do well with horror movies oh. after I watch... Like, that... that <gasps> sitting in that my, bed... My brother Zach is the same way. Sitting, sitting in bed at night, I'm, I'm not good. Like, like, I love it in the moment, but, like, I'm not good with it. Um... Which is, it's like a curse, because it's like, I just, I, I, I know that if I watch a horror movie, I have to, like, prepare myself for the night, because it's like, <laughs> and that's what happened with The Witch, is I, I watched it, and I was like, this movie was incredible. Oh, that's right. This is, yeah. this, it was one of the scariest movies, but it was so good, and I did not sleep Dude, for, I didn't, I did movie. not sleep for four days. Oh, I, no! <laughs> I did not sleep for, like, two nights straight. That's too bad. The third night, I kind of... 
fell asleep, and then the fourth <laughs> night got a little bit closer, and then I was, Dude, so I'm so fine now. No, it's okay. I just like I'm the exact opposite. <laughs> I can, oh, I slam. I'm no, slamming my hands again. You, you I know can't what? My hands. That, that's, 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 we, you know, we, we we try. You know what? I am though. I, I'm. It, it's not the opposite. It's uh, depending on the type of horror movie, like something like The Witch. I get scared of the dark outside. Yeah. If I'm in the woods. Like when I go out on the deck to smoke after watching a horror movie, uh, because of the squirrels and the wind out here and the fact that it's, it's like the end of fall, there's dead leaves everywhere. So if one squirrel runs through the brush, it sounds like a person walking. Yeah. <laughs> so I get like, huh? is that a witch? Even, even if, but it's like, if I'm in my house, it's still, yeah, like, no. because I still like, I'm my sitting in my like bed that. and I still like freak out if like, you know, I, because I'm just like, well, it's a paranormal entity. It doesn't matter if it's inside yeah, or true. outside. It's going to come inside my house regardless. <laughs> and but it's not real. Which is not real. <laughs> I know. But I mean. No, that's yeah, totally no, fair. I, I don't believe My mom it. is like that too. My mom doesn't like. My mom didn't like the exorcist because it had to do with the devil. And she's like. She's like, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. You know, that's a real person. She's like, physical things. I can think my way around. But I'm not magical. Like, if the devil came after me, I can't beat him in any way. Yeah. It's the same, like. You can't beat a witch. <laughs> well, that that's kind of the opposite. Where uh, I've been watching a lot of like uh, like true. I've been listening to a lot of like true crime stuff recently, mm-hmm. and like people disappearing. And like I just finished Mindhunter season two, and that stuff scares me even more because it is real. Yeah, at, see, that's what I at, told at, her. <laughs> at least, at least with like with a witch. Like, I'm obviously I'm over it now. Like, I'm, right. I'm over it because after like three nights, I'm like, okay, the witch isn't coming after me. There's nothing outside. There's not a, the witches aren't real. Mm-hmm. Um, and I can convince my brain of that being like, none of this is, those things aren't real. Right. And also thinking about like, well, in real life, all those people, the Salem witch people, they all, they all died. Oh yeah. They that was a, people, that was all uh, political. Yeah. It was all like political and people died a horrible death. And like, that, none of those that's is a real. jealous neighbor getting someone's house. Yeah. Is what that is. Essentially. Yeah. It's the fucking, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Another history lesson. Um, <laughs> That freaks me out even more is the real life stuff. Yeah. Can I ask you a question? What's up? Do you have a religious background at all? No. Okay, because I was going to say, my mom was raised in a very... I want to watch The Exorcist also. That's that's on my, that's on my list. That well, Exorcist 3. She said this to me... I mean, it might be different now. She said this to me years ago, though. She was raised in a really religious household. Mm-hmm. And so I think things like... Like a Catholic household. So I think things like demons and whatnot were really pushed into her head at an early age. For me... She may have had a religious background, but she didn't put on us at all. So I grew up essentially atheist. No. So I don't have like, I feel like she has an inherent fear of supernatural things because of her initial belief in religion and stuff. But yeah. I, I did not have that. I'm the same way. If I hear I mean, a, well, okay. I, I did grow up. I shouldn't say that I don't have a religious background. I did grow up believing it as a kid okay i did believe it as a kid because i was gonna and say I did, and i got my first communion and everything I, I i guess i didn't do any of that i was gonna say so yeah i guess i do have a, a little bit of a religious background so, so i the, guess like i didn't really think about yeah I, I i had my first communion and stuff i didn't go to but like i didn't go right. i didn't go to church okay every so sunday. she went constantly no yeah i didn't go to church like every, every sunday weekend. i didn't do that i i did get my first communion and i had to do all that bible you know like Go right. through that process. But I didn't go to church every Sunday. But, like, I did believe in it growing up. So I think there is that inherent... I do I maybe think there is that inherent because fear. Because the real stuff, like you were just saying, that mm-hmm. really, really gets me. Yeah. Because I'm like, what if someone broke in here? Because, like, like, it's totally, totally possible. I, but I, that's what all that, that was my only point. It's like, I feel like if, if you have any sort of, like, because reli- religion is, in a sense, supernatural. I feel like... Like, like for someone like my mom, who's like raised in a household where it was like, yep, God is, God exists and you will go to hell if you do things wrong. Things like the witch or the exorcist that have to deal with like Satanistic black magic things. Mm-hmm. I feel like some, it might like subconsciously get under people's skin a little more than those of us who like have had no affiliation with it or, under, cause I can't wrap my head around the idea of like a supernatural entity, like the devil. It's, it's, there's no way that would happen. But I can definitely wrap my head around someone like stalking me and take following yeah, me home. Yeah, I just yeah. When I yeah, so maybe that is it. Yeah, when I was yeah, so maybe that is it. When I was a kid, like I just I mean, but I just thought but... that like because I did believe in that. So I thought that, okay. that I thought that that was real. I thought that there were well, that's just a theory. Like that's just a I don't guess. Know. I'm, like I'm, I don't know. <laughs> like yeah, I believed in. I guess I I believed in God, but like I always just thought as a kid that like all that stuff was real. Okay. Anyway, or like 
I, you know, people would tell, like, my parents would tell me, like, not, that's not real, like, demons and vampires, <laughs> not, all that stuff's not real. But it's just always, I guess I just never got over the fact that in my brain, I, I would, there, there would always be that thing in the back of my head going, like, well, what if, what if yeah. it is real? Like, you know, and I, me having anxiety, like, oh I, no, I'm constantly like, it's me. I'm constantly like, you know, what if? my back against the wall, like looking at every corner, being like, <laughs> what if it is real? Like, I have to be on guard. I have to like, yeah, and then run you, out of the room. And like, then you think about like, man, there was that one time I forgot to pray. That's gonna fuck me up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. When I was a kid, yeah. So, it, uh, oh my god, that's awful. Yeah. So that must be scary. Yeah, I think it was a bunch of different things, but like, yeah. as I get older. And yeah, it depends on the horror movie. Like, out, immediate, so like immediately after I watched The Witch, I watched uh, Candyman, which <laughs> Candyman is an awesome horror movie. Okay, I, I know that I have not seen. So okay, it, well first of all, I The think Witch is really funny. I, I want to say premise. my thoughts about The Witch. Uh, the Witch, oh, yeah, 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 really quick. So The Witch, amazing. You saw it too, right? Yeah, it's one of my favorite movies. Yeah, I, I Witch, love The Witch. Witch is awesome. If not my favorite, the atmosphere is great. Robert Eggers. I mean, mm-hmm. I'll talk about The Lighthouse in a bit too. I mean, incredible directing, incredible acting. Uh, the the little oh, boy, yeah. oh yeah, that little kid that when he like has his monologue, that was some of the best child Dude, acting. I've I ever know seen. Yeah. that was bonkers. Some of the best child acting I've ever seen ever. Ugh. Like that blew me away. I was like, holy, it was so real. Shit. Yeah, that kid that really insane. got like possessed. Yeah, yeah everything yeah. about it was great. I loved everything about it. All the horror with with it too was great. The, the scene that really freaked me out and that, like, couldn't get out of my head was when they were in the shed, like, the witch is there and she, like, turns around and does her laugh, like... Oh, I couldn't, dude. I couldn't, and then, like, I could not get that scene out of my brain for Because she four just kind of, like, appears there. She crashes down. That's she, right. She that's crashes right. down, like, flies down. That's, She's it's a scared, fucking witch. She can yeah, do what she wants. scared the shit out of me. So, like, that's <laughs> what... That scene really got me. Yeah. Um, and, like, I couldn't sleep for, like... I, that's, I just kept replaying that over in my brain, and I was like, if that happens to me in real life, I will. I know, wouldn't that be pants. terrifying? Yeah. Oh my god. So, <laughs> the um, idea of that. Yeah, definitely watch The Witch. Good stuff. Fantastic. I, beyond that, too, I mean, like, the sets are really good, the costumes are really on point. Yeah, and I, accurate, yeah. Dude, that script is so. You feel like you are in that time period. Yeah, At yeah. At least yeah. to me, I'm like, oh, and I'm yeah, there. just like God, yeah, and just like this like God fearing time period. The other, well, that's the thing, right, is across the sea in England, not everybody is like that. A lot of people are not, like, this, like the Puritans were religious radicals. Like, they were weird to everyone else, which yeah. is why they're so, like, bizarre and whatever. Yeah, um, oh, yeah, I guess, like, if you don't, I guess I shouldn't, I don't guess, I guess I don't have to say the plot of Texas Chainsaw, but, like, if you've never seen The Witch, The Witch is about this Puritan family that gets kicked out of their village yeah, I, I think I think it's actually supposed to be like the Plymouth Plantation. Yeah, they like get the, like very, they get like, like first... they get like uh, yeah they get uh, like banished because they're Puritans and they don't agree with uh, the Puritans are like the the this is during a time in U.S. history where like the Puritan Church is splitting and yeah. they're like these the family is considered more Puritan like they are following the Puritan beliefs. That Which they, is that they follow the Old Testament, right? They, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like when they landed there, this family is doing what they had set out to do initially when they came to the new country. But the city, the town they're in, I, I don't know if there's I, in that time in the movie. That's at a very specific time in U.S. history, and they're like very beginnings of the country where like the Puritan faith splits, and you mm-hmm. have a lot of that happening, like people going off and starting new towns. Yeah. So they move on to this plot of Just land, like and there's a witch in the <laughs> woods, and the witch. Just like fucks with them, and mm-hmm. uh, it's fucking New England. New England's yeah. full of witches. <laughs> yeah, I love the yeah Robert Eggers. He's from I want to say he's from Maine. Okay, Maine, Maine or New Hampshire. That New Hampshire is haunted. New, yeah, that's witch country. <laughs> yeah, he's from Maine or New Hampshire. So like he he grew up with all of these all stories, the fun, all the fun stuff. Uh, you know, he like being around, and I he must be from Maine because the lighthouse, like, and there's oh, tons right. of light. So he must um. Just growing up with stories about lighthouses and everything. Yeah, Dude, there's so many ghost stories coming out of Maine. The, and stuff like I can that. I, when I get to the lighthouse, I'll talk about the actual story that it's based off of mm-hmm. the the actual like horror lighthouse story that the, he based the movie off of. But yeah, like you're saying, the costumes and stuff, the the acting, the 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 dialect, the the old New England dialect mm-hmm. is on point. Like they talk old English, like. 
it's it's insane. Like even the little child act, even yeah. not even the little boy, like the little yeah, the little kid, six year old, five year old kids are talking that way, and it's insane. Like they're so good at it, and even mm-hmm. like even the accent, like it's amazing. And everybody's fantastic. They they do a lot with very little too. I no, that's like. what I love about Robert Eggers' films, and that that's I think that's a very common characteristic of films that I like is mm-hmm. directors who can do a lot with little. The budget for that movie and also for the Lighthouse, it's only four million dollars, oh. which is not a. I mean, that's a lot of money, but that's, no, but for a movie like yeah, that, for a, yeah, for a movie, yeah, you watch the you watch the Witch for a movie like the Witch, that's not a lot of money. No, and everything is on one location. It's all. At the at their sort of like log cabin or like yeah. ar- around the area, that was really woods. clever to get them out of the towns. Like that's the first scene is them leaving, and then yeah. the rest of the movie is on their farm. Yeah, which is the isolation aspect of that alone. Like if you look around the farm, it's just trees, just yeah. thick trees. Like yeah, constantly looking into the trees, like because you never really see the witch that I, I mean, often. If you're not from New England, that's a characteristic: is that the trees are fucking close together like if you get I lost mean, in the woods it's that's scary. a characteristic of new england it's just that it's i actually looked it up because i'm i'm current because i'm currently writing a script and i want yeah, it to yeah, take yeah. place in in, new, in 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 uh, new england and i looked it up it's like new england is like 80 percent trees it's like yeah. it's it, it's like one of the most forested states in or areas yeah, yeah <laughs> not states yeah new england collection of states I, I was thinking about massachusetts like oh, new funny. england is like one of the most I mean, dude, forested Ver- Vermont, areas. Vermont and Maine are like, like where I lived, my neighborhood was just trees. Like yeah. there weren't sidewalks, there All were I, trees. Yeah, it's like where I lived most of my life. Look like, at where we are now. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> I hate walking out of your house to my car. It's so <laughs> terrifying. Because <laughs> yeah, I just like turn on my headlights and just like into the abyss of the trees. Yeah, that's, like, that's true. And um, there's there's animals out there all the time. Yeah, it's, yeah, Massachusetts is, it, yeah, it has like this weird. It's creepy. Yeah, it has like this weird. Not even Massachusetts, Dude, just like New England. It has like this weird haunted feeling. Well, this time of year. Oh, yeah. Stick yeah, season. This is especially, yeah, this is fall. Like, like gnarly trees with no branches reaching up into a gray sky. Yeah. It's scary. Yeah, all the, yeah, it's, I mean, yeah, it just makes you think of Halloween. Like, mm-hmm. and I mean, you got the Salem witch trials going, like, you got Salem and all that crap. Like, I know. There's, yeah. Thanksgiving. This is where the country was founded, so there's a shitload of history. <laughs> yeah, like, I love Massachusetts. Don't get me wrong. I love my... I love my state and I love New England. I love, mm. I love the area. It's scary though. It's where I would, yeah, but it's, it's freaky. And I think maybe that's partly where my anxiety comes from. Like, <laughs> you're just like constantly being surrounded by like the unknown. In the we dark. live in a haunted part yeah. of the country. It's a pretty, I mean, I lived in, surprisingly, I wasn't even scared in Savannah. Savannah's supposed to be the most haunted state. That's interesting. Savannah, Savannah's, but not state, sorry, city. Boy, Savannah's yeah. supposed to be the most haunted city in the, in the, in the country, but, um, the only reason I felt uncomfortable in Vegas was, uh. But you know what the thing about <laughs> the Savannah is? The you know what the thing about Savannah is that I like? No fucking trees. <laughs> where I live. <laughs> it was be. all city streets, yeah. all lights, people everywhere. It's yeah. Like, how can I be scared? Like, That's what I was saying about the horror movies is like being alone in the woods at night in that darkness is scary because you're like, oh, I'm pretty. Yeah. I even driving no around at night, it's just like you're driving around and it's pitch black and it's just. Woods everywhere. You're just expecting some fucking demon to cup out and like, come out in front of your the car thing, in the right? headlights. There's a there's a stretch of road. Uh, whenever I come home from from production meetings and fittings with Jacob, there's a stretch of road that's really long and it's dark. No street lights. No guardrails. It's just trees on other side. Dude, your side, your street. When I get out of here, it's like <laughs> yeah. this long no, stretch of no. dark. Like, yeah, dude, exactly. And it's but this is super long. I, I can't remember where it is, but it's I think it's somewhere in Clinton. It's just this really long stretch, and every time. And there's also a few prisons around here. Yeah. <laughs> and like, there's the Michael like, Myers, dude. Dude, the, every time we go down that road, I always picture like a guy just, cause there was one time when we were driving and, um, you know, the like the dividers, but like the space between the highways, mm-hmm. like you've got the, they're going both directions. There's, there's like that spot of grass and trees in between. It was like maybe midnight after working on Shiv or something. And we were coming up. It was probably like 1230 and we were driving back and we we're almost back and it's pitch black. No one's, no, I think it was probably like 1 a.m. No one's on the road at this point, especially out here. Yeah. <laughs> and from that divider, from the blackness, as we're driving, a car fucking pulls up out of that like area out of nowhere just turns onto the road and starts driving there's not even a road out there but like either the guy crashed considering the because he came toward us as we were driving and then turned up onto the road and went the right way 
So their car was parked the opposite direction to the the traffic. It was fucking bizarre. That's so <laughs> like, weird. Shit, shit. And as they were coming out, like a traffic cone fell out from under the car and a bunch of tre- trees and stuff. I feel have a feeling they crashed really luckily because yeah. their car looked fine. Yeah, it, it literally looked like they were parked there waiting. And we thought it was going a, to freak someone out. Dude, we thought it was a ghost car. Dude, I'm telling you, pitch, pitch, <laughs> a ghost pitch car. blackness out of nowhere. This car just like, just turns up, like literally, like you can't see to yeah. the side of the road and just out of the woods, just <laughs> a oh, car. So and funny. then just starts driving on the road. And we were like, we, it was going the exact same way we were for the longest time. And Jacob and I were both like, that's definitely a ghost. <laughs> That's a ghost car. <laughs> that guy crashed earlier this afternoon and this oh is a ghost. God. Sorry to like interrupt. No, 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 no it's fine. Uh, have you ever seen anything supernatural? I've never seen anything supernatural. Oh, dude, I don't know. <laughs> so, so that, so if I have, I've written it off as me just seeing things. Yeah. Uh, there was one instance that I may have, but I definitely, I've always I definitely to. wrote it off. Yeah, me too. I've def, I, I, I think about it now and it was definitely my eyes just playing tricks on me. Like, so I was like, Mm, probably like 13, okay. 12, maybe. I was sitting at like my playroom at my old house. And oh, yeah. how my playroom was like... Were you like, alone? No, this was my, oh, bro- okay. my brother was right next to me. Okay. I think. I was going to say, anytime I've had something like that happen, it's always... But it's like all the, all the lights were on. I was just like sitting in my playroom, like playing video games or something. Mm-hmm. And um, hanging out. So there was like a couch, a TV, and then there were like two window doors that like... Oh, like, okay. Like two doors that just had a bunch of windows on it that like connected the player, like... You know, like, oh, open the playroom. like a, like a liminal room. Yeah, like, like on either room. side, like on the left and the right. right. And the right, and the, this wasn't weird for the doors to close on their own because like the, uh, the vent for the air conditioning was right yeah. there. So like sometimes they would just close. Or if um, you have a clever cat. Yeah, I had a but cat I, that used to I looked doors. over to the right, to the door on the right. I swear in my brain, I saw like a shadow hand, like, like a shadowy hand grab the door and close it. <laughs> demon <laughs> yeah like and closed the door so i was like what and i mm-hmm. i was like mom and i like went like asked and you were alone out. and i freaked out my mom was home like everybody okay. was home i just it freaked me out but like looking back on it now it's like i've never yeah it's like but like i i look back on it now and i i look back at my time in that house and it was like nothing ever weird ever happened in that house like there was how old was the house we built it so okay, so then there was no ghost. There. Yeah, it's like there's so yeah, that's the other thing. It was like there was no <laughs> someone would have had to die. <laughs> yeah, it's like we built it on like this brand new property. Like like my dad made the plans for it and everything. It's like so it's not like this wasn't like a and weird. You built house. it on a demon door. <laughs> yeah, it's like we. I don't know. It's like I look back on it and I'm like, there's no way that was a ghost because like nothing ever weird happened at that house. It was like there wasn't like I came home one day and then like poltergeist like drawers were open and fire. It's like it's just like I was like it definitely was just my mind. Mm. Like playing tricks on me, like I just looked over and I happened to see like a weird hand, but like it wasn't a hand; it was just like my mind, dude, like whatever. It's like I wanted. It's like the door was closing. Like I, my mind must have like wanted me to see like somebody closing it. Um, can I tell you this? Mm-hmm. And this is not going to sound great about me, but uh, I've experimented with psychedelic drugs before. Okay, <laughs> and I well, thought, well. I mean, oh, sorry. <laughs> not making um, fun of you. Well, I don't know about anyone listening, but I will say this. Things like they stick inside the fat of your brain. And I've heard that um, exercising can induce like flashbacks. You don't trip out, obviously, but like you'll see like tracers in places. The other day I was working a bunch and I was going pee and I had a moment. I saw a silhouette of a per- I was I was the only person awake at this point. Mm-hmm. I, I, I work sometimes really late into the night. So it'll be like midnight by the time I'm done doing stuff. I'm like everybody's already asleep. I was going pee and out of the corner of my eye. I, I honestly cannot describe this. It was the most bizarre thing. I looked and could... I remember in my vision, there was nothing there. All the same colors of, like, the tile and the door frame and the fridge that, like, were in the side of my vision were there. Mm-hmm. But I could swear they had been distorted into the shape of a person. So for, like, half a second, I thought someone was standing next to me, but it didn't feel normal. Like, it felt like like menacing almost. Like, uh-huh. like someone was coming into the bathroom really quickly that I didn't know. Mm. And then I was like, oh, and I double, I did like a double take and I was like, and then I thought for a second, I did not actually see anything. I literally just, for some reason, thought there was, and I think it was like, because I was working and like, maybe like adrenaline was releasing that fat yeah. in my brain and like, I had like a tracer in, in the side of my vision that looked vague like a person. I don't know. I, I chalk a lot of that stuff up to that, but when... Your brain, your brain sees what you want well, it to see it's like 
Well, no, well, that's what I'm saying. It's like when I've gone biking, I've had that sometimes. Like I have like a purple dot like fly through my vision. I'm like, oh, okay, that was from when I popped acid that one time. Yeah. <laughs> um, but when I was a kid, I, I remembered this now. In my old, old house where uh, we used to live, which we also built, um, I would always see out of the corner of my eye, it looked like a little cat darting across the floor. And mm. I always thought it was a thing. And I always thought it was a monster. It, it had to have been something else. But uh, I've definitely seen that. But I, I personally have not, like, encountered a ghost. But I spent a lot of time in the woods and always wanted to, like, run into something. But I, I know a lot of people that have supposedly seen it. Like, my brother Stephen went running once. There's a story of the Green Mountain uh, wild man mm-hmm. in Vermont who's basically just, like, New England's Bigfoot. Mm-hmm. And uh, my brother said one time he was running and, like, he, he saw him because, like, he heard he was running like on a on a like country trail and there was a river behind beside him and he heard like a big splash he was like huh like a rock had fallen and then he looked up and saw another rock like flying through the air and landed in the water and he threw a stick up there and another rock fell and he was like and he called out and nobody answered <laughs> so he was like maybe it was a wild man i don't know <laughs> but uh, um haley has a cool ghost story we, we totally left movies and now we're well, in ghost okay stories. well I'll, but that's fine i'm gonna come that's back fine. to Candyman. I, I feel bad because i i feel like i derailed this no, so i'm gonna come back to Candyman, but i want to tell haley's ghost story haley's my girlfriend she has a really interesting ghost <laughs> we story. we all know that now. yeah she has a really interesting ghost story so um this is a, this is a good. Sp- yeah. This should have been our Halloween. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Seriously, why wasn't this our Halloween episode? We're gonna call this Halloween Part Two. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> well into November. <laughs> yeah. So um, this is when she was a kid, and I'm probably gonna butcher it. Mm-hmm. When she comes in the show, maybe she can tell it better. So oh, when she yeah, was yeah, yeah, yeah. when she was a kid, she uh, she was inside her house, and she was talking to her mom, and she like her mom said, "Why don't you go outside?" And uh, I think her, I think. She said, why don't you go outside and, like, pick some berries or whatever. Like, pick some fruit. And like, her from, mom's face is, like, hyper-realistic. From, like, the bleach. garden. Like, from the garden. I think it's something like that. I'm probably going to... But she's going to listen to this and be so mad. It's just, like, she had to go outside and do <laughs> something. as vague as possible. Her mom's going to go outside and do something. So she... <laughs> Leave this house. <laughs> so she goes uh, outside, and then she looks up at the window, and she sees her mom in the window. And her mom's, like... But she's see-through. And her mom is like her, her mom, mom is waving at her and everything, and... It's saying like hi and Haley's Casting like spells. Haley's just like can I tell a story <laughs> sorry I'm sorry <laughs> I, I can't help myself sometimes okay. so her mom's waving and Haley's going like hi hi like what's up you know I'm, I'm doing what you asked me to do mm-hmm. and then she goes so then she goes back inside and she goes to her mom and she's like hey why were you waving at me like why were you waving at me from the window like what was going on and she was like, I wasn't upstairs. I was downstairs. What are you talking about? And she's like, no, I saw you upstairs. So she was like, Haley, get outside right now. And she like told her husband, Brad. And uh, she's like, Brad, I, Haley saw someone in the house. I like, called the police. And like, Brad, like, oh, went that's, up, Brad, like, went upstairs. that's like really scary. Cause what if it was a real person? Yes. Yeah, so, like Brad, uh, but like they eyes, went out to the house and they off. searched and like even her brother was like, Haley, this is a prank. Like this isn't funny. Like, and she's like, no, I. I thought I saw mom. And then she also said, like, that the person in the window was, like, really, like, kind of almost, like, shadowy and dark, like... Ugh. It's a a thief. It's a robber. (laughs) So, that's her weird ghost story. She might have just been... I don't know, like... That's spooky. That is spooky. Whenever I hear spooky things, my eyes get really watery. And when I yawn. (laughs) I don't... And I did... I did did both. I just just don't... I just don't know. Like, I... I've never experienced anything spooky. No, neither have I. I'm always extremely skeptical of... Of things like that, because I I know how much our mind plays tricks on us. Like even me, like I do all the time when like when I'm really scared and I, I I'm like expecting something to come out. You like, hear things, yeah, and then I hear something and I'm like, oh, that's it. Or like I might see it like a shadow and it's just something else. Or like I I, oh, turn, I, do that all I turn my head really quickly and I see like whatever something on my bed and I'm like, it's a thing, but it's not. And it's just like see. I, I know how much our mind can play tricks on us. Like I, I used to react like that a lot, but uh, what I started doing was like, look for the source. <laughs> like, what could be reflecting that? Like, immediately I try to tell myself, like, okay, that's definitely just a trick of the light. It's hard, but I don't believe in really anything. I don't think ghosts are real. I love the idea of them being real. I like that. Yeah, that stuff fascinates me. I, I go back and forth because, again, I just have that thing in the but back of my brain that just goes like... It still spooks me out, though. Yeah. Like, like, even though in my head, I'm like, yeah, there's no way it's real. It's still like, what if it was, though? Yeah, it's spooky. <laughs> it's like, also, well, what, what scares me is the implication, like, for example, what if that really was an intruder? Yeah. Because yeah. then it's like, here's what freaks me out even more than if it was a ghost or a burglar. If they're not stealing anything, 
the thought of someone just like living in your house without you knowing about it as like a weird sick fetish is like that freaks me out even more like what if that really was just a person who just liked to walk through their house where they were home yeah. knowing that they didn't know that like that like like picture like imagine like you know whenever you're showering you don't know if that person's watching you somehow yeah and, and then it's like oh why like that that almost scares me even more than a ghost it's just like i mean real people that's the that thing is like, exactly because it's like, it's like real what's people wrong with you yeah like like a ghost is one thing it's like a supernatural entity like you can kind of almost excuse it for being weird but if a normal human being is doing that you're like yeah why watch mind hunter it's <laughs> yeah it's fucked it's like why but anyway back to the movies watch the witch <laughs> it's good yeah, yeah watch the witch is good so the movie i watched after that was candy man yeah candy man is probably up there now as one of my favorite horror movies. <laughs> it's it's so good. It uh-huh. like it really like. I wasn't scared by it. I mean, it, it's kind of it is spooky. It's freaky, but like it was more just like I just I don't know. You get this sick feeling after mm. it's over. Like it's it. I, I I get a lot of Get Out vibes from it. Oh, it came out before Get Out. It came out in the nineties, but I I get a lot of vibes from that. I was talking to a friend today and he, I was telling, I told him I saw it and he was like, it's very much, it has like a, like Nightmare on Elm Street vibes. And I said, yes, yeah, like, like Nightmare on Elm Street and like Get Out. It has a lot of racism undertones. It's, it's basically, it's essentially a, a white woman experiencing, experiencing like the horror of what it would, of like what a black person goes through isn't he old though like isn't he like an old ghost from an is, is yeah that, so is he from like another time yeah so the, the plot of the movie is this i forget her name but it's this white woman and she um she's like a grad student and she's doing right. a thesis on folk on like folklore and, and she, she discovers him she discovers she finds out about the the story of the candy man and the candy man is like a bloody mary type guy yeah yeah you say his yeah name you say his name five times and the mary comes and kills you he has a hook hand he has like a weird gross hook hand. yeah and bees yeah and bees <laughs> Um, yeah, because he was a slave. <laughs> oh, is who, that how they killed him? No, this is what happened. So yeah, this is what happened. Because I know, because I know. So his grandfather was a slave, and he became a painter. Mm-hmm. He uh, he became a painter, and he painted like he did portraits. Right. He, he painted the portrait. He got hired for this like lord person, and he like painted this white girl. Here's his daughter. But then he fell in love with the daughter, and they had a they had a baby. Oh no. And they found out about it, or like they got her uh, pregnant. Dude, really? They found out about it, so they they chopped off his hand, mm-hmm. and then they killed him with bees. They like yeah, so that is how they killed him. Like, yeah, yeah that's, that's fucked up. They him, yeah, that's a so, terrible way to die. Yeah, it is. So he's like, yeah, so he's a goat, and like, so yeah, he's a ghost, and no, basically, he's a goat. He's a, goat. <laughs> he's a ghost, and yeah, she's studying him, and she like, you know, jokingly summons him. him, and yeah, he, she he comes after him, but like. She gets like framed for a murder, and it's basically like the parallels of what happens to her are like parallels to what happened to him. Not parallels to what happened to him. It's like it's like parallels of like what a black person might go through. Like oh, like some of the things that happens to like a black oh, person. Like 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 essentially, she's experiencing what it, what it would be like to to be the the victim to like systemized racism. Yes, essentially. yes, okay. yes, exactly. So like she gets or, like. The so system like, is against you, and you like no matter what you yeah. say, you're wrong. Yeah, it's like she that gets is fucked up. She gets framed for a, she gets framed <laughs> well, for a murder, and she knows for a fact it's not her. Yeah, and it's like that's that, like fucking what is it? Queen and Slim or whatever is coming out. It's like I think that's oh, a similar Queen, premise. Queen and Slim. Yeah, yeah, like like I mean, it's not a horror movie. Like yeah, they, they get pulled over and and they yeah, it's like yeah. that and that is like, um, cops, like Thelma and Louise. Yeah, yeah that, that's like <laughs> Thelma and Louise. Uh, it's basically the black version of Thelma and Louise. Yeah, um, but so, yeah, but it's like. Very whatever. Yeah, it's, I don't mean to say. Serious, I don't mean to say. Movie. I don't mean to say it like that. But no. Well, like, yeah, no. It, it's a similar idea of like they're running. They're on the run. Yes. Yeah. They but kill. It's, they kill someone and they're on the run. Yes. They kill someone. Like, isn't it whatever? Go, they get pulled over. They thing. get. They get pulled over. It's and wrongfully it's, pulled over. Yeah. They, it's and they, clearly they, like he's he, he's gonna he's like trying to arrest the guy because he's black. Yeah, because he's <laughs> black, and then they kill the his, cop. His crime was being born. Sadly. Yeah. Yeah. So she. Yeah. She gets framed for a murder. She clearly. It's not her fault, and she knows it, but yeah, the system is totally against, like, her. That happens to black people all the time. Yeah. She gets sent to an asylum, and she's just stuck there, and she thinks, like, she's... Like, God, they think she's that crazy. would be awful. And the, the parallel to that, being in the asylum, is she goes to a housing project, and, like, okay. to find out about the Candyman, because the people... Like, Candyman keeps attacking this housing project. Okay. 
I think the parallel with the asylum is the housing project because it's like they're all like trapped there. Like they, yeah. they're, they're all, everybody that's at that housing project. They didn't see, choose to be there. Everybody that you see there, that housing project, they're, they're there. all like poor. It's all poor living conditions. Right. And it's almost like, it's like we were talking about with the Native Americans. Like, it's like they're all just been like cast aside. It's like. They've been put into a, they've been put so far on the margin that there's nothing they can do about it. Yeah. And they're exa- just stuck there. Exactly. And it's like, and the candy nice. man kind of represents sort of the, I, like the sort of like evil ideal of black people that like, like the sort of evil label they get. Like he's this like evil black dude that's like, he's just sort of like lived up to the label. Like it's like when we label black people as like murderers and drug dealers and like mm. awful. It's like he sort of represents that and he like looms over this, that ideal like, and that's what you think of when you think of a project is, is yeah. crime and poverty. Yeah, he like mm-hmm. looms over this like housing project He's and the they dark can't shadow. escape. Yeah. And she basically like goes through that where it's like she experiences like those everyday horrors of like, like just those real life horrors. Mm-hmm. And like, I won't say what the ending is and I won't go into more detail about the plot. Those are just kind of the more important points. But like by the end, you just get this like, yeah, you're this, like, this, wow. like really sick. Yeah. A really serious note. Yeah, it's like sick, sick mm-hmm. feeling. It's a great horror movie, and yeah. the guy who plays Candyman. It's a is, horror movie with something to say. Yeah, it's it's fantastic. That's yeah, cool. if you liked Get Out, you would like this movie. I it's, love it's, Get it's Out. It's great. Um, highly recommend Candyman. And then was it um the Lighthouse? And then I saw the Lighthouse. Uh. Lighthouse is Lighthouse. The Lighthouse is incredible. Yeah, it's probably the best movie of the year. I gotta year. see that. We gotta watch it. It's it's probably the best movie of the year. I hope Willem Dafoe. I don't even care about the Oscars, but I hope Ooh, Willem Dafoe wins an what? Oscar or Robert Pattinson. This movie is batshit banana crazy. <laughs> fucks and I God, I gotta see it. Man. It's uh, it's just this total descent into madness. Yes, and uh, yes, don't go into it. I will say this, don't go into it expecting the witch. Okay, no. It's completely, it has horror elements to it, but it's, it's very funny, first of okay, all. Nice. It's really funny. It has a lot of great comedy moments, mm-hmm. and like, things can go from comedy to drama, like, in the I drama love, Dude, hat, like, that, that feels like real life. Yeah, I, I like, love that. Things can go from comedy to drama to horror, like, at yeah. the drop of a hat. Like, it's great. Really atmospheric, great cinematography, shot on location in Norway. The lighthouse, interestingly enough, isn't the real lighthouse. They built that. Mm. They built the lighthouse and, the, like, the other houses that are there. Oh, wow. Super interesting. Yeah, it has a lot of... It's very symbolism heavy. It felt okay. felt more like a. It, it reminded me a that. lot more of like an art film. Oh, it's like a very. It's it like is, a, it isn't a funny aspect ratio. <laughs> yeah, it's like in a smaller aspect ratio, and it's in black and white. Yeah, it's it, pretty arty. <laughs> it's pretty arty. No, it's like um. No, it's like a very grounded. It, it is very reminiscent of like an art film, like kind of like an artsy film. Have you ever watched? You ever watched? You know sort of like those kind of artsy films before like there's a lot of symbolism and yeah like um that collection oh like the criterion yeah that type of shit yeah like it's not like super heavy like you're not gonna go into it and you're not gonna be oh my god you're not gonna be like it doesn't feel pretentious yeah because like i said it's very funny it has a lot of like the i don't know the humor is is really good and like um a lot of good quotable lines Mm. um Oh, nice. It doesn't feel like it takes itself so seriously cut because of those comedy moments. Like that's good. It, it doesn't feel like it's taking itself so seriously. It, it kind of knows that what's happening is insane. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I but love there that. is. But you will t- come away with it with your own meaning. I saw it with my dad, and my dad was just like, "I don't." Oh no! He was just like, <laughs> "I don't really." He's like, I, "I thought it was good. I just like." Dude, it's not his type of movie. We should have seen that together. We know. Sit there spitting. <laughs> we should watch it. We should go see it. We it's, definitely should. Uh, but Robert Pattinson and when are you on break? Sorry to interrupt. I get out December seventeenth. Okay, cool. Wow, wow man, like Robert Pattinson is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Like in this movie, but Willem Dafoe is on like another level. Like I love him. There's one scene in particular. <laughs> it just really shows him as an actor. Like. Uh-huh. And the cinematography, especially in that scene, is amazing. Like, but both of them are doing a f- phenomenal job. Willem Dafoe is, I mean, uh, Robert Pattinson, I mean, he has totally gone from his Twilight days. Like, he is, 
he is on like nice. another level. He is like really on his way. Like, I mean, I don't even think he's on his way. He's definitely like he's there. one of the greats, one Dude, of the great nice. actors of our time. Nice. Like, he's so Hell great. Yeah, yeah. I like him too. All, both of them I love are, him both. Like, yeah. That's awesome. Highly would recommend it. If, uh, just, I mean, even if you're not in, even if you don't think you're going to be into it, like, Still, go check it out. It's, go watch it for the sake of watching. Just it. yeah, just go watch it. Just for the just so you can say you watched it. Like it's, <laughs> it's so good. Um, and then the last thing I kind of the big thing I kind of watched that I that binged recently was um, Mindhunter season two. Mm. If anybody's seen Mindhunter, uh, is that the thing on Netflix? Yeah, so Mindhunter is this show. I was um, afraid to watch that. It. It's a great show. It's a uh, it's about the sort of starting of the behavioral science unit at the FBI, which, and them, what? them learning uh, about that's what that them is. actually studying serial killers, them understand, like, oh, I'm thinking of something else. because before that, and they explain this in the show, but like, you know, before they started studying these people, oh, right, 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 it was right. all like, okay, well, we need motive. It's like, mm-hmm. it has to be motive. It's like, were they... Was they, were they, this. was it a, a lover? Did they know this person? Did they, you know, what is it? Like, you know, and all these murders start popping up where it's like, there's no motive. It's like, these people are being killed it's at random. Like, it's like chimps in the jungle. Yeah, it's like, they don't understand it. It's like, why would they do that? Why do they, nobody understands it. And it's like. For the they, thrill of murder. <laughs> and they weren't, you know, and people weren't using like. Psycho- people kill. weren't taking psychology seriously. They weren't putting that in, like, using it as a factor. So it's, th- it's this guy, Holden, mm-hmm. and Tench, Agent Tench, I forgot their first names, but like, them That's sort of need. starting the, what's called the behavioral science unit, and then like, they basically go and they interview serial killers, and they Very smart. get intel, and it's a super great show. It's mm. phenomenal. It's directed by David, it's a, the show is directed by David Fincher, mm. who like, Fight Club, mm-hmm. Seven, I can't think of um, I think The Finchening. <laughs> the Finchening. Fight Club and Seven are the two most Heavy popular. Clench was him. Heavy Clench. <laughs> Heavy Finch. I think Master Metal was also. <laughs> yeah, okay, Master sorry. Metal. It's <laughs> kind of stupid. But if you've ever seen Fight Club or Seven, that should give you a good idea. Oh, Moon Men from Mars. That was him too. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Oh, he also did, um, what's that show everybody loves with, uh, with Kevin Spacey? Um, oh, fuck, House of Cards? Yes, he also did House of Cards. <laughs> I was just, like, the moment you said that, I knew it, and I was gonna say something, I can't even remember what it was, but I was gonna say something that was definitely not House of yeah. Cards. He also directed House of Cards, so that should give you a good idea of what the show is gonna be like. Um, mm. highly recommend it. Mm. I watched season two, it was good. It was really good. Not as good as season one. Not saying, but that doesn't say them. That that's not saying much. It's still, mm. it was still a phenomenal season. A powerful show. It's a very powerful show. Season one is good probably shit. the. If you're just gonna watch it, watch it for season one. It's it's great. <laughs> but I mean, that's I mean, season two does have anyway? season two does have more notable serial killers. They go they go um, mm. they Get go Ted Bundy in there. They go interview uh, Charles Manson. Ah! They go interview Son of Sam. He, he, he was just a wacko, <laughs> right? But Charles they Manson. but they want to know like why they they, they want to understand like uh way too many psychedelics. Then he was also crazy. <laughs> yeah, he was like literally when they interview him, he's like batshit. So none of what he said like I, it, yeah. it was frustrating me because when they were interviewing him, it's like none of what he was saying made Dude, any sense. Like can not, I can I tell you something interesting about him? Yeah. He's had like a million wives and girlfriends. Yeah. Doing that shtick. Right before he died, like he died recently, right up until he died, like people would interview him and it was just fucking nonsense. The guy's a total loony. Yeah. I completely they played his, head. they played his music in the episode. Oh my god. And I shit you not, like it wasn't bad. It was, it was good. No. Like it was actually his good. His mind was open. But he's also fucking nuts. <laughs> and this was like before. This was oh, okay. this was a little. This was like before he was. Listen, you know, man. If the devil got his hands on him, the devil's a very creative person. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> Think like about literally, Pagani. like none of what he said. Like it was. It was like frustrating me. It was yeah. like none of what he said made any sense. It was like it was like literally just like gibberish, like just babbling. Like mm-hmm. it was just like just saying whatever he could think of like it was like a child like it was the most like hippie shit like it's like the fake it's like a fake hippie it's like the most fake hippie shit you can ever like his brain's broken it's like i'm here but i'm also not here you know it's like just the world's ending man like you know just like all this he's transcended yeah it's the stupidest shit 
Dude, people fucking loved and still love him for some reason. I don't think he's like a messiah. Because he says shit like that. The guy's a wacko. <laughs> Does it the guy's make... a fucking nut bar. He wanted to start a race war. Yeah, because he's a psychopath. Dude, here's the thing, right? If somebody's already unstable and they start taking psychedelics like they smoke cigarettes, then they are going to become a fucking maniac. Yeah. Because you're already... I mean, you're already not all the way there and if you're taking something that will definitely make you not all the way there i don't know whatever i don't know much about charles manson i just know some people love the hell out of him and are devoted to him and he's just a nutso i don't get how you could still follow him though it's like dude watch um on netflix watch dark tourism because there's this dude he gets compared to that one documentary guy what's his name he's really famous he did the my scientology documentary louis something I don't know. Oh my god, what the fuck? I don't know. I really like him. A lot of people hate him, but I like him. But this guy, is, uh, he's, I think he's Australian, or I think he's actually from New Zealand. I can't remember. Specific. I think he's from New Zealand. I can't remember. Where Flight of the Concords from? They're New Zealand? New Zealand? Yeah. yeah, okay, so then it's New Zealand. I was going to say, I'm pretty sure he's from the same country as they are. Yeah, anyway, he does a segment in California. He does it because he does like dark, dark tours like in, in Vietnam or like dark tours in Sri Lanka. Like he does like... You know, basically dark tourism is people that go on tours of like haunted houses or like dangerous touring, like tours that are like, da- like he does a, a tour where this, this ex marine is, uh, he's got this horror thing going and like he basically like simulates torture. It's fucking crazy. You have to sign all these liability waivers because you can get damaged and stuff. And he's like, I don't want to be responding. He's like, you know, whatever. One of the tours he does is he goes to this, he, he investigates Charles, Charles Manson because people love to tour. Like they go to his, his place and he meets these dudes that like worship him. And they're, <laughs> dude, the guy that worships him is a fucking nut bar. Do you think I smoke a lot? This guy, as he was talking to him, had like a blunt in his hand. And another one ready to go, right? Like, the guy was just high 24-7. guy was fucking insane. Anyway, those are the type of people that like Charles Manson. Drugged out wackos. You're insane, dude. Yeah. Just, I didn't mean to... I, I, you no, have a whole thing make going, any but sense. I was it just It doesn't like, make any sense. You, you, it's like, he's a fucking insane psychopath. And it's like, how? The, those, how can you not see that? Like That's the thing, is, is, is they think they are seeing deeper. They think that that's the surface. And that, and that we are stupid. Yeah. And that we're not seeing the truth. And that they're tapped into it somehow. Because I'll tell you this. It's the same thing with conspiracy theorists. It's people that, and this is going to sound really elitist and awful, but it's the type of people who, like, either aren't interesting in their own life. They have nothing going for them. Because the dude that really, really loved him a lot, this was a guy who was in prison most of his life and was like... You know, he's like, I've been on the wrong end of drug deal, bad drug deals, and this and that. Like, you know, things... You can get a bad rap. You know, maybe some of the stuff he did wasn't that. And it's like, dude, no. Yeah. Th- this was not a guy who was on the wrong side of the tracks. This is a man who's legitimately insane and convinced a bunch of people to murder for him. Like, yeah, no. <laughs> this is not. I don't know. I-, I think it's the type of people, like, they want to feel like they have knowledge that the rest of the world doesn't have because they have so little personally. Which is really a mean thing to, to think and say. But No, like, I mean... um, if you uh, look at where those dudes lived, it's like, yeah, these guys have nothing going. Yeah, I mean, uh, the writer Alan Moore um, wrote like Watchmen and all that stuff. He wrote, oh yeah, yeah he, he wrote a he wrote a book. He wrote oh a, my god, I love him. He wrote a graphic novel called From Hell, and it's a yeah. it's a Jack the Ripper thing, but it, it has like a conspiracy theory involved. And he said, there's a quote from him where he was saying like, when I was doing when I was writing From Hell and I was like researching conspiracy theories and stuff. He's like, the the thing that I learned about conspiracy theories and conspiracy theorists is that they don't want to believe that the world is much simpler than it is. And the simple truth is that the world is not special. That like, ba- yeah. basically, I, I'm, I'm butchering it. But like, basically, what he was saying is that like, the world is not special and that the world is actually very simple and like, yeah. it's not complex. Like that's, the, but that's the scary part is that we want to mm-hmm. know that like, yeah, you, that there's something more like you want to justify Charles like for a gu- guys like that. It's like they look up to someone like that because of maybe they, they think that they see something that's that's not there. And that's exactly it. Maybe they want to justify for themselves. First of all, they're, they're the, these are the type of people that don't want to fit into the grooves of society. Like they, they feel empowered by the fact that they're not normal, yeah. um, quote unquote normal. But what you just said, that's really into like that that nails it right there is like it's almost like well there's no way that this dude is this famous killer and this famous thing and he did all this stuff without having some magical thing about him like he has to be like a messiah yeah but, 
Yeah, even, that's, even like, even that's, like, he was just a drugged up weirdo. <laughs> even like, you know, even people like the Holocaust deniers and stuff, it's like, all of the Holocaust conspiracy theorists are like 9-11 conspiracy theorists. Like they just don't want to believe that like... Something that simple, like, like it could just be a normal human being who just gets in the wrong place at the like <laughs> yeah it's like it's, like the wrong dude got to power <laughs> yeah it's exactly it's just like they want to believe it's something more that the, because of the scale of it too. same thing with jfk yeah like and all the like i i'm a firm believer that that lee harvey oswald did not kill jfk i don't think it goes as deep as some people think it goes but but it's a similar idea of like no one could just kill the president that's like well technically i mean it happened yeah <laughs> Happened twice, actually, twice in a row. <laughs> you can have. Like, well, I guess he wasn't. Bobby wasn't really the president yet, but. Well, uh, Abraham. Oh, that's true too. Yeah, Abe. yeah. That guy just fucking walked in there and shot him. Yeah, that guy worked at that theater. Yeah, he, he was. An, he was an <laughs> yeah. actor. Everybody knew who he was. He was an actor. <laughs> that's the one. That's and that was a conspiracy. And that actually was a. Con- I mean, technically, it was a conspiracy. Yeah, that was planned. Yeah, that was all. That technically, that was a conspiracy. I had to read a book about it for. Um, oh, there you go. For like summer, I remember like for summer reading once in high mm. school. And that was actually re- that was that was actually a really good book. It was called it was I think it was just called Killing Abe or something oh. like that. And it was written by John <laughs> nice C. <title>. Riley. <laughs> nice dude of all people. No, no, I'm sorry, not John C. Riley. No, sorry. Um, what's his name? Bill O'Reilly. Oh, not John C. <laughs> Riley. Sorry, I Bill like, O'Reilly. <laughs> fucking the the fuck it will do alive. That guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, I love John C. Riley. For going John C. Riley is great. Um, yeah, maybe. Uh, Maybe we can save conspiracy theories for dude. We should next that, that, time. That's like a whole. That's a whole. Yeah, that's a that's whole, whole episode. Thing. Maybe we'll do that next time. Cause already I, an hour, we're already at the time. Limit. Yeah, we're at an hour. I was gonna say I totally cut you off though because you were going on about Mindhunter and then I was like Charles Manson. <laughs> oh well, uh, Mindhunter. I recommend. I'd recommend Mindhunter. It's a great show okay. if you if you if you like, especially if you're into like true crime and serial killers. Like if you're super interested in that stuff, it's a and it's a great show. There's nothing wrong with being interested in serial killers. It's fascinating. Yeah, that, it's like so fascinating. I, I had a period of time where I was like researching psychopaths and sociopaths just because I was like, well, yeah, I want to understand these people. They're not villainous. It's like, well, what's going on in a sociopath's head? Like, yeah. what's going on in a psychopath's head? Like, oh, so this is why. Yeah. If you also, if you want to learn, like, this is great. It has good information too, and it's like you're you're like walking right along with the characters where you're you're learning along as you you know you're learning with them as you go along. It's very reminiscent of... Oh, well, Zod- David Fincher did Zodiac 2. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, like, if you like David Fincher and you like his <laughs> movies, the show is Give it great. A watch. If you liked If you liked Zodiac, <laughs> if you liked Seven, if you liked Fight Club... Oh, yeah, Seven was crazy. Seven is, yeah, fucking insane. I never If you liked House of Cards, it. you'll like this show. Um, and if you just like serial killers and true crime, true crime, you'll like this show. Yeah, I mean, I was going to say, quickly, you get to kind of see... Like, we, we were just shitting on Charles Manson. He's yeah. a nutso. But at the same time, you do kind of get to see the humanity in some of these people. Like, it's easy, cause, cause what they did is, is evil. Like, like Ted Bundy, for example, or, um, what was that other guy? The show focuses a lot, not focuses a lot, but they're building up to the BTK killer. Oh, okay. the, the first season, you just see. Jeffrey like, Don, that's what I'm thinking of. The first season, they just kind of show clips of him, like, his everyday life. Mm-hmm. But then in season two, we actually, like, hear, like they're talking about BTK killer. Like they talk about him and like You know what's funny to think about this though? Is what? is uh chimps will go into a part of the jungle and just slaughter other chimps for the sake of slaughter. Mm-hmm. Or to or to, like there are some what is it like biologists who have studied chimps and thought like, oh well they're taking their land. It's kinda like a land dispute. Those chimps are living in a part of the you know area that these chimps are living in that has more resources that they want. But no. Dude, sometimes it will go into an area, murder all the chimps, all the other chimps, and just leave their dead bodies there and never come back. Yeah. Just just for the sake of killing other chimps. Like, I, I think that that's something, like, weirdly hardwired into some primates is to just the urge to slaughter for the sake of slaughter. And yeah. I think I think some people are just... Well, yeah, some people are like that. I mean, you see with the with Mindhunter and the serial killers that they interview, it's like... It's like some a of them sad... are Some of them are sexual. Some of them are definitely, like, they get off on it. Some of them, it's just, it's a power, a lot, some some of it's a power thing. They want power in their life. They want, they want control. You know, Son of Sam was like that. Yeah. BTK is sexual. I mean, I can't even name all of them. They, especially in the first season, they interview so many people. The big one is Ed, Ed Helms, I think his name is. Oh, yeah. Big Ed. Yeah. Like, he's terrifying. He's like the main focus of season one. He's like this 
terrifying dude. And it's like, what did he do? Because they sounds he would familiar. Kill people and wear their skin. He would kill people, rape them, chop off their heads, and then have sex with their heads. Okay, I'm thinking of someone else. What was I going to well, say? That's Ed Gein. You're thinking of Ed Gein. Yeah. Yes. 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 Well. Jeffrey Dahmer, for example, like if you, because that's well, that's what I was gonna say. We are a really intelligent species, and I think the more complex your brain gets, the more room there is for things like this to happen. Where mm-hmm. like there's just a weird misfire in there, where it's like, eh, I like to kill people. Yeah, <laughs> like like there, there's such a com- we have such a complex framework of like neurons and things firing off that like 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 dolphins are like that. Like dolphins will rape other other animals and kill other animals just for fun because it's like dolphin. There are river dolphins who will bite the heads off of a fish. And then fuck the fish. Like, like, masturbate with it. Yeah. Wow. Which is like, you know, I don't know, but but they're really intelligent creatures. So it's like the more intelligent a creature gets, I think the more, the the easier it is for it to commit, like, atrocities (laughs) or or something. Yeah. It's like, but uh, people like Jeffrey Dahmer, for example, you look at them and it's like, it starts small. Like, when he was a kid, he had this weird fascination with death. And then, like, as he got older, it just, like, he, like, I've seen interviews with him where he's like, yeah, you know, for a while I, like, suppressed it. And then one night I just, I saw this hitchhiker and I just, I knew I could do whatever I wanted to him. And so I did. And then he's like, once I got away with that, I was like, it was like, there was no stopping me after that. He's like, once I, it's like, for some of them, they're like, once I knew I could get away with one murder. And then, and then you find, like, bodies in fridges. And it's like, holy shit, this has been going on for years. Like, it's crazy to think yeah. about. I mean, most people, it starts off small, where it's like, you just, I mean, you start off killing animals. Or they talk about that in season one, too. They talk about that in the show. Like, it's just, you, they start off killing animals or, like, hurting small yeah. things. Like, it's. Getting a taste for it. Well, because yeah. that, that's one thing. I remember when I was a kid, I stepped on a bug and with my cousin and his friend was over and he was like, you're going to become a serial murderer later. And I'm like, what? And I got really scared. I told my mom about that. And she goes, no. And it's like, because some people think that they're like, oh, if you're prone to violence at a young age, it's like, it's not that they're prone to violence. It's that like, they are like predetermined, essentially, like, like they're game brain chemistry is different and so you know it's not like if you see a, a six-year-old stomping on a bug they're going to become a murderer it's it sees like these people in particular have like a, a bizarre fascination with death like like jeffrey dahmer was keeping like skeletons under his bed and finding like dead birds and then finding cats in the neighborhood to kill like if, if, if you're at that point maybe you should and there's a difference between a bug and like a squirrel like if you're shooting yeah, or, or capturing the neighbor's dog and killing yeah it. yeah like it it's, so you can watch it decompose. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, yeah. Because some kids that turns into a, a love for biology. Like, as yeah. weird as that might sound, it's like some kids get off dissecting worms and then later on, they're like, yeah, they're not crazy. They're, I mean, because when you're a kid, you're, you're, uh, the part of your brain that develops empathy, that, that, that feels empathy doesn't develop in you physically until like much later in life. Mm-hmm. Like, so until you're like, I think like around like I mean, sixteen. Yeah, there's or that something. theory. Yeah, it's like you're more narcissistic when you're younger, and then as you get older, it's like well, Lord of the Flies. Like, like if you look at Lord of the Flies, those are all like little kids, and they do the worst things to each other. And uh, part of the thought process behind that is it's like, yeah, this is before their brain, like biologically, your brain doesn't develop empathy until you're like pa- like in past puberty. I think like like once you're like an adolescent, you start to develop empathy. Uh, that you know, empathy essentially like, man, I don't want to punch you, Derek, because it would hurt you. And, yeah, and it would hurt. I would get hurt. I don't want to hurt you. Yeah. But as a kid, your brain literally can't like comprehend that. So it's like, if a kid does violence to something, it's kind of like, well, he's a kid. He doesn't. He may not understand that he's hurting this thing. But then once they get older, and it's like, that's just a that's they like go a into that a little thing. bit in season two because it's a big plot point in season two that like goes into that even more. Like it's sort of it's like kind of. It, experimenting and testing the waters with that like but, the development of people yeah I, i'll talk to you about it i'll tell you about it like okay after yeah yeah, the, yeah. we don't need to get to it but I, can, I, I think we should end now yeah we can wrap that was a this is a good spooky i know it's spooky <laughs> halloween part two yeah that, that's flip. probably what we'll name it <laughs> what the flip um <laughs> Why you gotta do that, man? <laughs> I, I, I edit these. It tasted a little wine come up or something. Oh, okay. <laughs> had a little wine the other night. It was not good. It's still in there. These these were your two. These were your two spooky horror horror two spooky horror, boys horror guests horror hosts. It took me a while to get that horror right. hosts. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's all we have to say for today. Yeah, this is a good one. This is a pretty good. These endings are always so awkward. <laughs> we're just kind of like. 
Anyway. Goodbye.